Hi, my name is Miroslav Suchy. I'm an employee of Red Hat and a Fedora contributor. Today, I want to show you what a Disgit is. The name Disgit is portmanteau of two words, distribution and Git. Disgit. Disgit is a Git with additional data storage. It is designed to hold content of source RPMs and consists of three main components. Git repositories, look aside cache to store source tarballs and scripts to manage both. Let's see how does it work. RPM source package typically contains a spec file and the sources. Source tarball being binary and potentially large are not very well suited to be placed in Git repository. On each tarball update, it would produce a huge, meaningless diff. In this Git, when you import a source RPM file, only spec file and patches are stored in a Git. Tarballs are put aside in a things we call lookaside cache. Lookaside cache is a very simple web server which can store binary blobs based on their name and checksum. Hey, wait a moment! That sounds familiar! Like git lfs, git large file storage. Yes, you are right. It is very similar and it does the same things. This git is actually older. It was originally named DCVS and existed a long time before both Git and Git LFS were invented. When Git has become popular, we swapped CVS to Git and that's it. No one had the courage to migrate to Git LFS because this Git is integrated in many, many infrastructure components. Now let's move the computer to show you how you can work with this git. The primary client tool for this git is FedPakeG. You can run FedPakeG without any option and you get nice help page. When you finish your initial package review and that task I will explain in a different video, you have to request the new repository. It is done by running FedPakeG request repo, uh, name of the package and bugzilla number. The bugzilla with the package review has to have flag Fedora review set to plus. When the repository is created, you can clone it. I'm going to clone bash repository. If you want to just play with it, you can clone it as anonymous user. You can see that this is, in fact, a normal git repository. You can git log, git show, git pull, and as you can see that the git repository contains a spec file and patches, in fact, bunch of patches here, bunch of patches here. Um, it can even contain small sources file. The spec file contains references to several small sources, which are in fact small text files, so no problem having them in Git repository. But the big table is not here. We have here special file sources. which contains the name of the file, the checksum and the type of the checksum. The tarball itself resides in the lookaside cache. It can be retrieved using command fedpkg sources. It is downloaded to the current directory, but it is never part of the git. 
because fed package automatically puts the file in git ignore. When you want to do a local build, you can either run fed package local build or you can run fed package mock build. The first one runs simple RPM build. I recommend the later because it runs the built-in mock which prepares the correct build environment and runs in isolated setup. I terminate it now, but you can see that it runs the build in Fedora Rawhide, which is right now Fedora 36, even though my workstation is running Fedora 34 now. How FedPKG knows the version of the Fedora? <laughs> because of the branches. Rawhide and main, which is in fact just alias to Rawhide, builds for Fedora Rawhide, branch Fedora 35, build to Fedora 35, etc. If you want to build your package to Rawhide and Fedora 35, you have to do your changes in Rawhide branch, build it and then switch to Fedora 35. Do the changes there again and then build it again to Koji. But thankfully to Git, you can git merge, git cherry pick, what do you want. You build your package using fed package build, which submits your build to Koji, which is the main build system for Fedora. And you can see it on address koji fedoraproject.org. Here you can see the latest build and you can see the, the artifacts and the logs of the build. I repeat again, you have to run this command in each branch for which you want to have the package built. The command fedpkge build does not allow you to build your package if your changes are not committed and not pushed to the remote. And you are not allowed to do git force push to prevent you from changing the history. But you can do git revert as many times as you wish. When you build the package for the rawhide, then it automatically appears in the distribution in the next Compose usually the next day. For released Fedoras, you need to file an update using fedpkg update or using web application, but more about it in next video. Oh, and I didn't show you how to upload a new version of your package to this git. You can either do it manually, edit the spec file, and don't forget to bump release and add changelog entry. You can utilize rpm dev bump spec um, bash spec for that. And then upload new tarball using fed package new sources foo are exact. This will upload the file to a local side cache and modify sources and git ignore. Or you can for the package import bash source rpm. This will extract sources, patches and the spec file from a source rpm and upload the tarball to a local side cache. Again, do not forget to do that in all branches where you want to have the change. Before you push it to the remote E, you have to have a Kerberos ticket, which you can get using command fk in it. Do not forget that you can have only one Kerberos ticket at the same time. If your Kerb company uses Kerberos 2, you may prefer to do your packaging in virtual machine where you will have the second Kerberos ticket. Or if you package only occasionally, you can destroy 
your company ticket and get the Fedora ticket using FK in it. And when you are done, you restore your company Kerberos ticket back. For your own comfort, you can tag your commits using fedpkg tag or git tag, or even better fedpkg tag dash c, which will tag it using name and version. But that is just for you, because she doesn't use that tag at all. That's all. Later you may find that there exist some other tools which easy to work with this git. I will leave that for some other day and another video. That's all for now. Bye-bye.